Hey, this is a program I created at least 20 years ago, if not more, 25 years ago. And I first started working on it 30 years ago. This demonstrates the four object in orbit parametric four orbit generator. Um, this is an old splash screen. Uh, it, sh it shows several of the other applications I created long ago. Um, so if you hit the go button, it brings you to the interface. It's, it's a parametric interface, but um, it's not really up to speed to Windows 10 as, as we are now. We're in Windows 10. Um, I haven't updated the, the code. I've been thinking of porting it into Blender, make it a, making it a Blender plugin, but we'll see. So when it first comes up, if you have a decent machine, it will run very quickly, and the objects will soon leave the screen, as you see um, in this environment here, as we're zoomed in, scale at 50. The instability of the objects, um, you see that this one's gone off this way and this one's gone that way. So if we increase the resolution by reducing the delta time, so if we add a zero into delta time, the program will run 10 times slower but have 10 times better resolution. So if we run it, you can see it's running much slower. And the red object seems to be coming back. Uh, that's quite interesting. So the, the program will quit if it overruns. So let's stop. Let's zoom out to uh, a scale of 10 and recompute so that uh, we're a bit farther away from the uh, center of action. As you can see the red object is that. If uh, the objects speed away in a straight line, they're probably not going to come back. And the, the um, application will quit. So if you stop it, let's add another zero so it runs a hundred times slower. But with higher granularity we have higher accuracy. So as you see, it's running quite slow, and this this machine is it's a it's a medium uh, i5, eight gigs of RAM. You see the red object it sped away. It seems to have slowed down. Ah, it's returning. Here it comes back. So it it's actually behaving much better. But if you can wait around for it to um, display, uh, you can actually increase the resolution so that it will ex it will take days, weeks, or months uh, to create these curves, but at extremely high resolution. Now uh, it's speeding away. The red object is speeding away uh, in a straight line. We'll, uh, we'll let it continue. Uh, 
doesn't look like the red object is going to come back. Hmm. Okay, let's stop. Let's zoom out even more. Let's go to two so that uh, a scale of two. Let's see if the red object, if it slows down, it'll probably come back when the objects leave, the small objects, the red and the uh, cyan objects, number three and four on the parametric interface here. As you see, what it did before, since we're zoomed way out, we're uh, having a rather slow and minute environment here. But it will show us if the objects are leaving, slowing down, so that they will eventually come back to this uh, highly unstable dual ellipse. It's like a you know two large black holes, black holes. Okay, you see the red object is leaving. If it continues at this scale in a straight line and it doesn't slow down it probably has been launched so far, so far away at such a velocity that it won't come back. So you can put the, uh, the pointer here to test to see if it's slowing down. And it, it does appear to be slowing down a little bit. So if it slows down enough, it'll stop. And the two black holes will eventually uh, bring it back. But it may take a long, long time. Hours, days, weeks, months. The program doesn't have the resolution I would like. But the greater the, the you know computational resolution, the slower it goes. And of course, I'm not testing for overrun or underrun. Uh, you see, the cyan object is now speeding away at extreme speed, which tells me that uh, it is not going to come back. The red object seems to have slowed down, and in that case it will probably come back. But that cyan object is a law, it's, it just really left. Okay, we can stop. So let's zoom back in. Uh, let's go 40. Okay, and let's increase the the mass of these two objects uh, let's see let's add we go from 52 to 520 and let's see what happens you see we're only plotting what we see on the screen are only the points of where the object is at the computation cycle. Um, this is a, these are nonlinear differential equations uh, brought to us by that really smart guy. What was his name? Um, gosh, uh, is it, uh, Isaac, I, I remember uh, Isaac, Isaac, oh, Isaac Newton. Oh, yes. And you can see by adding more mass to the small objects, the black holes are being deflected. 
And because the red object curved as it left, that tells me that it's going to come back. Of course, we're only looking in one plane. It would be nice to have two planes. I could do that, but the program would, would be very cumbersome. But possible. It's possible. You see, the red object is is really uh, taking some some uh, crazy orbits. I see. In, if I port this to Blender, it would be possible to ride on the objects to see what it looks like from from the object. So we could actually put a camera on the object and watch from the object instead of this still palette from a distance. And the cyan object. I don't know, the red object seemed to have has uh, it left uh, in a straight line which tells me bad news. Bad news. Okay. Oh, it came back. Going really fast as it went through the uh, the black hole uh, universe there. And it seemed to be a little curved, so it may come back again, the red one. The uh, cyan object is still caught in uh, orbit around the, the green black hole. <laughs> yes, I added color to a black hole, yes. with uh, a mass of a hundred thousand suns. And the other two objects are 520 solar masses. Uh, is our red object ever going to return? Okay, I'm going to stop and uh, zoom out again to see uh, what happened to our red object. Let's see if it uh, if it came back. <sighs> there we go. See, it's curving around. I would love to have a 3D interface uh, that uh, Blender would provide. It may be worthwhile to port this to Blender. I'd have to convert everything to Python, of course. But I have been known to dabble with that evil snake, the Python. So the five, the red five twenty is going through the needle's eye there, uh, curving again. Wow, uh, that's that's just really awesome. Going out and it visually slows down, so it will come back. Slowing down, slowing down, 
You see how I made it so that it writes over the parametric interface so we don't lose it. The uh, X and Y offset allows us to move around in the field. So we could place the uh, orbits off into one corner, for instance. Yes, the red object is slowly coming back. How about that? Oh, it's speeding away in a straight line. It doesn't look like it's slowing down either. I'm afraid we've lost it. We've lost our red object. And of course, the program will overrun if uh, we let it go. So let's stop it again. All right. What happens if we bring this down to 1. So we're increasing the resolution by 5 now. So it'll be 5 times slower. But with extreme accuracy, the computation is... Um, this, this is like um, increasing the, 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 um, the depth of resolution that nature provides. So as we as we approach zero in delta time, we we start simulating nature itself. If we in decrease delta time even more, the computations will take weeks, months, or years, which is simulating reality. One thing I've wanted to be able to do is, is try and figure out how to get orbits to switch as they go around, but um, I haven't been able to figure that out. Okay, let's try it again at five times our resolution. As you can see now, they're moving extremely slow, but we shouldn't get these um, these unwanted high-speed departures. Then again, I may have spoken too soon. Yeah, this is way too boring. Let's uh, let's stop it and zoom in to. Uh, really close again and watch it yeah so we have a blue and a green I should have switched the colors I should have made the red one cyan and the cyan one red now that uh, I see this because cyan over green isn't very good. Can you imagine being on a planet around this star? How terrible the tidal forces would be spinning around like this, orbiting around that black hole every few seconds. Look at that. So that's something I'd like to do is put a camera on a planet around that star spinning around at extreme velocities.
So at 500 masses and 100,000, yeah. Is our red sun going to come back? Ricola, Ricola. Wouldn't it be great if that's all we need to um, stop the virus? A throat lozenge? Star Trek, it's not. Is our red sun coming back? I bet it is. I bet it's out here somewhere. It's going to come back. Hmm. Ricola is tasty. Of course, this program is free in my website salzburg.com new downloads um, link I'll show you where you can get it at the end of this let's wait for our red sun to come back and then I'll stop this recording because I wouldn't want to bore anyone <clears throat> if I remember correctly, Newton was just concerned with two objects. The three object um, problem causes these instabilities or chaos. Um, this is basically a chaos generation. Since nature is basically chaotic, it shows how chaotic things can be if there are two black holes like at the center of the galaxy. You see the, uh, the red object is coming back. I'm getting intermittent power failures. Luckily I have UPS Ricola is good. Wow. You see the the uh, the two black holes are on the outside of their orbits and the red sun is coming through the inside of their orbits. And it's going away. It's slightly curved. I don't know. It might come back. Shall we wait for it to come back? Hmm? I think we should. Can you imagine writing at the beginning there? So this shows 
in, in chaos theory, this shows the sensitivity to initial conditions. All of those parameters up there, except the offsets, the x and y offsets, have a direct influence on initial conditions. So, you know, when you hit the compute button, it's time zero moving forward. Now what um, theoreticians try to figure out is when they when they have a condition that a known condition with measurements they try to move backward in time to see where things came from and then forward in time to see where they're going now red sun is coming back and uh, our black holes are on the outside of their orbits. Isn't it interesting that the red sun only passes through their orbits when they're on the outside of their ellipses? And that's very interesting. It's looping around. If it moves really close to one of the uh, black holes, it'll leave and won't come back. Oh, like that. Uh, now it's being dragged along. I don't know. Is that a straight line? It looks very straight. Okay. That's enough. Click to stop. So, um, as you can see, adding more mass Shall we double? Let's see what happens when we double the mass of the small stars. What happens? Of course, playing with the velocities really uh, causes extreme instabilities. So the red sun is slowing down. Ah, it's changing direction. Is it? Yes. Here it comes back. There we go. I know this is really boring to slow it way down, but uh, it reduces instabilities. Wow. Right by, right by the blue black hole. Like black holes have color. <laughs> Look at that. Is it actually being dragged along? So the red and cyan suns are a hundred times smaller in mass than the black holes. The red sun is curving, so uh, it hasn't left yet. I'd also like to figure out how to turn one of them off. So what happens if we only have three objects? Or two? Okay, is our red sun coming back anytime soon? Probably because it's highly curved. 
What would it be like to be riding the red sun? Look at the cyan sun here, riding this, being dragged along by this black hole in seeming stability, just ever so happy, continuing to spiral around, dragged along by the green black hole. Oh, here comes our red sun. Okay, the uh, the black holes are on the outside of their orbits. Uh-oh. Dangerously close and accelerating. You see how it accelerates? Ah, changing speed. Is it going to be dragged along? No. Nope. It's going too fast. I could put displays up here showing their velocities, but it would slow the program way down. Is it slowing down? It is curved. Curve means slowing. Completely different instabilities from uh, before by doubling their masses. The cyan star seems to be happy following the green black hole. <clears throat> okay. Is our red sun coming back? I think it is. I think it will come back into view. It would be nice to be able to zoom out interactively, but uh, it would require a supercomputer keeping all of these points in a database instead of writing them to the screen. Sorry, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Whoa. Now, it might be possible to record all of these data points and then display them like in um, Blender, so that you can sort of like, you know, zoom around inside, and walk through, fly through, whatever, like uh, they do in interstellar space, these interstellar space sci-fi programs, um, movies, would require a huge amount of effort to do all that because I'm just computing the next delta time. Nothing's being stored except the previous delta time so I can compute the next one. Uh, and it, you can see it's computing all of these things, scale, delta time, and this matrix of parameters. Energers only. Okay, Red Sun, are you coming back? Now the Cyan Sun just seems to be perfectly happy following along. Oh well. We'll know if uh, we've gone uh, off the edge if the program suddenly quits. Like I said, it doesn't check for overrun, it only quits. 
that's to uh, reduce computation time. I've done everything I could to reduce the computation time, and that requires throwing out error checking and the collision of a uh, collision detection, like they do in games. Collision detection, detection, you know, like when you shoot your your uh, personal shooter at another object, it has to compute when the bullet or the bomb or whatever you're 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 uh, shooting collides with another object in the uh, 3D space. The uh, resolution here is way greater than any video game. Wow. I don't know. This curve, this looks curved to me like our red sun will come back. But it's it was, you know, anytime we get a a really sharp dip like this, it means very high velocity. But uh we got this this curve right here. So it may come back. I hate to bore you with uh, waiting for something that we can't see to happen. I don't know, the, uh, the cyan... cyan sun... is it going to leave us? It just might. You see how it it gets faster and faster as it whips around, making these scallops. I wanted to make a 3D version so that you could have, you know, a split screen and look at it with lenses so it's three-dimensional. Now that we have VR goggles, we can do that uh, without that complexity. But the program, again, would be I would have to do two different sets of uh, spatial comp uh, computations to get it to display the um, the width from one to left eye and right eye. It would it would uh, it's possible, but it would add a huge amount of of a bulk to the program computational bulk. Okay, we're going to stop. That's the end. Thank you for watching.